Hi, let's talk about a fascinating subject, entropy, an overview on entropy. So entropy really at the heart of it is just a measure of disorder. I did put a little note right here. You can think about it as the degree of disorder or randomness in a system. Um, now, our unit for, um, for entropy is joules over Kelvin. Honestly, that really just comes from Gibbs free energy, but joules over Kelvin. And remember entropy, we get this symbol delta S. So um, that delta means change. That's going to be a change in entropy. Um, a little reminder on this, if we are going from order to disorder, so I'm just going to do O for order, D for disorder, um, that is going to be spontaneous, and that's a positive delta S. And if you go from disorder to order, it, you're making something become more organized, that's going to take energy, that's non-spontaneous, that is a negative delta S. So remember, this one is spontaneous, and the positive going from order to disorder happens naturally, so that one is spontaneous. Just a little reminder there. Okay, entropy is embodied by the second law of thermodynamics, so I want to remind you about that. It simply means that a spontaneous process, so one that um, once begun will continue on its own, uh, doesn't need any intervention or help. A spontaneous process is one that results in the increase of entropy, so increase of disorder of the universe. Um, and another way to look at it, this is really powerful, is that energy goes from being concentrated to more dispersed, from concentrated to more dispersed. Um, you can think about a big river and then having tributaries, and then those tributaries get um, into even smaller um, little rivers, and then those become even smaller and little streams. We're distributing all of the energy. Um, you can think about the Big Bang and the release of that energy and then it being distributed over the, uh, over the universe, over the course, course of time. Um, really, in a nutshell, um, the second law of thermodynamics just tells us that naturally everything goes from order to disorder. This right here. So nat this is second law of thermodynamics. Naturally, everything goes from order to disorder. My husband jokes, if he could have a superpower, it would be to combat the second law of thermodynamics, that he doesn't have to work on the car when it breaks down or the dishwasher when it breaks. Um, Okay, so entropy is related to the state. This is going to be the phase, like solid, liquid, or gas, um, or the number of particles of a substance. And you'll see that down here in our qualitative predictions. Um, now, here's how I want you to visualize entropy. As you're making predictions of um, changing from reactants to products, what's happening to the entropy? I want you to imagine ways that you can distribute the energy, okay? And I know that that seems kind of abstract, so I'll even tell my students, um, you can imagine the number of ways that molecules can, coll can collide. Um, so the thought is that we're going to have two molecules. We're going to take the blue and the purple. Um, and we're going to distribute energy from the blue to the purple, okay? Um, and you're thinking, well, how many different ways could uh, this collide so that we could distribute energy? Um, and so this hitting anywhere, we could distribute the energy. Or let's say that the purple had the energy it's going to distribute. So it could hit any number of ways. All right, well now I'm going to have two markers, okay? Two markers. So we could distribute energy to the purple one, and then the purple one could distribute to the, um, the pink. Um, or we could go blue to pink, and then we could go pink to purple. Um, you notice that the more particles I have, the more options of distributing that energy. Um, and that really is the disorder. So what I have my students do is um, really take away, imagine this. The more particles you have, the greater the disorder, which I mean, that's really intuitive. Um, but it's the more particles you have, um, the greater the dispersal, the options to disperse that energy. That's really what it comes down to. But for you and I to make this make sense and just be able to look really quick and go, what's going to happen to the disorder? The more particles you have, the greater the disorder, the greater um, the ability to disperse that energy. So there's your mental picture as you're making predictions. So with that, I want to help you make some qualitative predictions. I have five takeaways for you um, that you'll have to predict. Is the system increasing in, in disorder or is it increasing in order? It, it really goes back to this. And I always tell my students, think order to disorder or disorder to order. Okay, so reactant to product, is it becoming more organized or reactant to project, is it becoming more disorganized? 
but I like my students to write order to disorder and compare the amounts. So here are your five takeaways. Number one, there's an increase in entropy with phase changes. And notice entropy increases in this direction as you go from solid to liquid to gas. Totally makes sense. Solid is going to be very organized. We have a fixed volume. Liquid, we're close, but we can now move and translate. So that means that there's more options to distribute the energy. And then gases, completely broken apart, completely random by themselves, hitting all different ways that those um, atoms or gas molecules could hit one another. Okay, we have a, a huge amount of ways that those molecules could now hit each other and distribute the energy. Um, so an increase of entropy. So let me show you something here. Um, let's say that I have um, A plus B, and these are both aqueous. We're going to do a double replacement reaction, and this is going to yield um, let's say C, which is solid, plus, oh, sorry, I ran out of room there, D, which is aqueous. Um, just looking at phases, okay, just looking at phases, the aqueous going, two aqueous going to a solid and an aqueous, this would go from disorder to order. Because that solid, that precipitate, this got to become ordered. Um, we're going to have more organization on the product side. So this is going from disorder to order. That will require energy which would make that a, let's see, require energy, it would make it a negative delta S. We're going from aqueous to one solid and an aqueous. So that becomes more ordered. It is going to be, let's see here. Oh, I'm so sorry, forgive me you guys. <laughs> Caught that, that's not spontaneous. Takes energy, takes energy to become more organized. Um, okay, so phases. And if you are looking at liquid compared to aqueous, let's write this down. Um, Let's see, so if I have aqueous and I'm going to a liquid, so aqueous, we're going to have ions surrounded by water. There's more options of how um, energy can distribute. This is actually more disorganized than liquid. Liquid is more organized. So if you need to compare aqueous and liquid, liquid more organized, aqueous more disorganized because the aqueous has um, ions that are surrounded, more ways that you can, you can um, distribute energy. Okay, number two is there's an increase of particles. And I think this is really intuitive. I mean, think about toddlers. If I have two toddlers playing together or 10 toddlers playing together, oh my goodness, you get a headache even thinking about it. And I love kids. Um, but the more particles, it means the more options. It's like having three markers. The more options, the more ways that they could collide, the more ways really that they could distribute energy. Um, so with this, pretend with me that we balance this and I have a one to one to two to one molar ratio. All you have to do is count moles, compare reactants to products. And if they're all the same phases, okay, all the same phases. So let's pretend that this is an aqueous. All right, I'm gonna come back and make that an aqueous, um, which that really would be no reaction, but give me grace. Let's say that we're not looking at phases right now. If they're all the same phase, all you have to do is count the moles. I have two total moles on the reactant side, three total moles on the product side. That would go from order to disorder. Okay, that happens naturally. So that's going to be a positive delta S. Going from only two moles to three moles, I have more options and ways to distribute that energy. It becomes more disorganized, more disorganized. So count moles. The more moles you have, the more particles you have, the more disorganized it is. Okay, number three, if you increase the volume for a gas, um, so giving more space, more um, surface area where the gas could collide, and um, more area, in, or I should say more volume um, within the container itself where those gases can collide. It just gives more opportunity for energy to be distributed. Um, and then number four, as you increase the temperature, which remember increases kinetic energy, you increase um, the entropy, more movement, greater possibility that the um, energy will be transferred. So it increases the dispersal of energy because there's more movement, greater chance that there will be collisions that energy can transfer. And then the last one is if you increase the molecular weight. So you could just be given a couple of compounds. This is a really good example. Let's take our um, halogens. So if I have the fluorine gas, chlorine gas, and I'm comparing those, you could just be given those two and asked which one has more entropy. You're like, really? It is going to be molar mass. The greater the surface area, the greater the chance that there could be a collision where those um, the energy could be transferred. You're just thinking greater chance of energy being transferred. So as you increase molecular weight, you increase the entropy. So I say that this one 
has the greater entropy. That one, the coin, just because it's bigger, has a, a bigger molecular weight. And I'm thinking surface area on that. So there are the big five takeaways on making predictions, qualitative predictions for entropy. Really good overview and kind of a mental picture of how to think about it. If you have other questions, check out the thermodynamic playlist. Good work learning about entropy. You're at a great level in your education. Good job. Thanks.